Hey, what's up, Light Bulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2001 animation comedy film, Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, the movie. So this is the uh, film sequel to the TV series on Nickelodeon. And this is a very millennial film, very millennial property. The whole brain blast thing that Jimmy Neutron does, you know, I do it all the time. It's it's wonderful. So this is a, a movie, and then there was the continuation of the TV series, and then there was this a sequel to the film technically with the with the egg aliens um but that was a tv sequel film not a theatrical sequel film so this film the soundtrack is just absolutely incredible and and listening to it now that we've lost aaron carter it's he has what two songs in this he has his theme song and then a, another song in this and it's just such a millennial film bro it just gives that such that wonderful vibes you got instincts pop going on at one point it's wonderful. So, I rest, rest, rest in peace to, to Aaron. He was a millennial prince of ours. Um, continuing on with the story. So, Jimmy Neutron, boy genius. He is a science whiz. He and his friend Carl and their friend Sheen, who's obsessed um, with Ultra Lord. They're, they're trying to figure out a way to get to the opening of Retroland, which is the new amusement park in their, in their town. And their bad, you know, friend... Nick, uh, in their class, says, just sneak out. You know, parents don't understand. Just sneak out. So they wind up sneaking out. They go to Retroland. They have the time of their lives. But while this is happening, the... Uh, I can't... Re I can never remember the name of the alien race. They're egg creatures. Ooblard? Ooblard? Ooblard is the, one of the main guys. Uh, Ugtopia? I can't remember the name. They're these green egg creatures. And they have this uh, chicken overlord named Pultra. And so the concept is let's steal the parents of these kids on Earth thanks to Jimmy Neutron's communication with a toaster that he threw up in space. Um, use the parents as sacrificing food to Pultra. That way, good harvest and all that good stuff, right? So that's the theory. This film is very quick. Hour 20-something long minute. And so uh, Jimmy and friends then have the time of their lives that first day and a half that there's no parents. They can do whatever they want. She's peeing in the shower. They're having cupcake eating contests and they're just going crazy at the ice cream parlor, etc. So eventually uh, the kids want their parents back because they can't do stuff by themselves. Certain things they can't do by themselves. They need their parents help. So how do they, how do, they do that? So Jimmy figures out where their parents went to galaxy far far away he converts all of the rides at retroland into spaceships that the kids then go to that planetary system to that planet to go save the parents there's the battling of of Pultra and the and the egg people then they save the parents and you know live happily ever after so what's cool about this is that science fiction is very big within this property in general the jimmy neutron property but they don't wear spacesuits. They don't wear nothing. They just go into space and they just fly and the wind's going through their hair. Watching it now, it's just, science just does not exist in this show. In the in real science, even though it's a fiction science, but then the science fiction aspect of the rocket science and, and how do you convert an, an amusement park ride into a spaceship, it's just cool. It's fun. It feels like a video game. It's just, it's fun. What do you do for your community what do you do to get your parents back you know if parents don't understand but sometimes you need that mutual respect from one another and you need their help sometimes how do you get the help back from them it's just such a it's a great uplifting kind of film it just brings back amazing memories i have me and my brother watching it with our parents in the movie theaters back in 01 when it first came out it's just it's it, it brings a smile to my face watching it with friends then on the weekend you know eating junk food it's just it's a nostalgia film and it just fills you with happy warm memories of somebody who grew up at age 11 watching this film it's a it's a great millennial film the soundtrack is absolutely incredible and this was the first animated feature film nominated for an academy award in the in the new category of uh animated feature film beauty and the beast was nominated for an oscar uh, for best pe best feature film in '94, I think, and then I want to say Lion King was was nominated as well. But then it wasn't until like 2001 when the uh, 
feature film, animated feature film category started to debut. I think Shrek was up for that as well in 2001. Shrek came out in 2001 as well. Um, so it's just very interesting seeing like when new things started and then new categories created other categories. So then it, it, it's just, it's been 22 years since this film came out and 22 years worth of Oscar nominated animated feature films because animation is just another art form and it's just really cool seeing that especially with the different properties this was a columbia pictures property i believe i think columbia and paramount i think they swoosh because paramount is the umbrella overlord to nickelodeon mtv that property the viacom property it's uh it's neat it's neat seeing where things backtrack it's neat seeing the nostalgia aspect of things it's neat being able to recite certain things and, and sing it along and, and remembering the roller coaster flying through space and thinking how cool would that be even though there's Space Mountain and the Disney World and Disneyland. Just fun. It's a fun film. Keeps you nostalgic. Keeps the happy memories going. On to the next review. Mucho mahalo.